Green Arrow's tongue might be as long as a 10 foot pole. All right, hello and welcome to the official unofficial New Girl podcast. I'll be your host, Al, and I am joined as always by my co hosts, uh, Erica at Ambeline. Hello, Erica. Hello. How's it going? It's going awesome. How are you? Doing great. And my other co host, Ben at Please Be Excited. Hello, Ben. Hello. What is up, good people? I'm a fan <laughs> man. Hello, hello. How's it going, Ben? Good, buddy. How you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. And we are joined by our special guest, Rahul uh, at Rahula Hoop. What up? Yay. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited. How is, how's it going, buddy? It's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. All the better. Are you excited about, about this episode? Here. Absolutely. There is a reason that I'm here on this specific episode because, mm-hmm. spoiler alert, I love this episode. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Now, Rahul, uh, a moment in this episode where you're definitely going to say your crap catchphrase. I don't know if you caught on to that, but. Well, I'm sure we'll get to that. Later. <laughs> oh my God! Yes, it's happening. His <laughs> catchphrase there, so we'll get to that. I'm sure. Absolutely. But before we get to that, we're talking today about the 17th episode of the first season, Fancy Man Part One. Uh, it aired March 20th, 2012, written by J.J. Philbin and Nick Adams, and directed by Peyton Reed. We have uh, some interesting guest stars. Some some are back and some new ones. Uh, we have Rachel Harris as Tanya, the principal. We have uh, Callie Hawk back as Shelby. And we have Dermot Mulroney, because that's a name, as uh, sure Russell is. Schiller. <laughs> you might know him from... Uh... Oh, he, please. He was my in Best a movie. Friend's Wedding. Yeah, My Best Friend's Wedding. Mm-hmm. There we go. I don't Julie know any Roberts. other ones, Erica. <laughs> Told me no, that's no. the only one I got. And we got Randall uh, Park. We got Randall Park, yes. Uh, you, from WandaVision and Fresh Off the Boat. Fantastic shows. And The Office. And The <laughs> Office. It's true. Yes. Very true. But I have a feeling, Ben, you're going to enjoy this last but not least guest star, Blake Garrett as Elvin. Glasses. Remember kid. Elvin? <laughs> He's back. It is back. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So a quick recap of the episode. Um, After going phone shopping with Jess, it is revealed Nick has a 250 credit score and therefore cannot get a phone plan. So um, Jess suggests. I thought my credit score was bad. Jeez. (laughs) (laughs) You'd have to be like, you'd have, they give you 150 apparently for just being alive. So I don't know. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Love uh, just saying, oh, I'm sorry, I've been doing this a long time. I've just never seen a score this slow. Did you wake up from a coma? <laughs> <laughs> great, great scene there at the phone store, just all around like Randall Park, just knocking it out of the park. No pun intended. Jess, kiss, Jess suggests he goes ghost protocol and just be the guy without a phone, which uh, Nick is very excited about and actually doubles down on that later in the episode meanwhile shelby is impressed by schmidt's trivia knowledge after participating in a quiz night and winston isn't very happy about that um at school jess gets a visit from russell a student's parent who informs jess that his daughter will be skipping dream sess (laughs) where she's creating (laughs) doll art and instead will be uh working with a tutor um jess is not very happy about that and uh goes to find out more about this and learns that he's one of the school's biggest donors and that she has to focus on math 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 apparently like they're doing north korea (laughs) exactly (laughs) yeah uh winston confronts schmidt about making him look stupid in front of shelby uh schmidt suggests he can take a dive for his dumber friend who can't memorize facts (laughs) because <laughs> that's what it, being intelligent is all about memorizing facts right <laughs> we run into elvin again who is trying to help winston on how to seem smarter and suggests glasses 
Hi, Erica. Hi. <laughs> Nick, oh, this is. Oh, hi, Rachel. Okay. I... But you always have glasses on. Erica chose to put glasses on for this. I wore one. my glasses to stay special for this episode. I'm just blind. I just can't see without them. <laughs> Um, Nick convinces Jess that it is rich people like this fancy man who are the reason he doesn't have a phone. And just just vice versa, Jess is also convinced by that, just like Nick was <laughs> convinced by the ghost protocol thing. They just they take each other's words very seriously. By the way, seems. fun fact about the ghost protocol thing. Well, maybe not even a fun fact. Maybe all of you guys knew this. But like, I can't believe that that movie is 10 years old. Oh. Like, it came out the year before this episode aired. And when I, in my head, I was like, this episode came out in 2012. Like, didn't it come out in, like, 2015? Like, how did they even make that reference? And then I yeah. looked it up, and it came out 10 years ago. Oh it just blew my mind. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. If you were to ask me, this show was still on the air probably two years ago. Yep, so, and the 80s yeah. were only 20 years ago. Never forget that. <laughs> yep, <laughs> the 80s will always be 20 years ago. Yep. <laughs> it's how time works. <laughs> that is how time works. <laughs> so Jess decides that she wants to confront uh, this fancy man. She uh, Her car breaks down as she's on her way to see fancy man and ends up accepting to take his car and return it to his home the next day while, while, while he's having a party. Um, and that's when Jess, along with Nick, return the car to Fancy Matt's house and stroll through the impressive mansion. Russell runs into Nick, admiring his study and his clothing, <laughs> decides to give him a cell phone as a Christmas present. Uh, Nick asks if it's possible to be sexually attracted to an object. Russell assures him it is. <laughs> I totally understand that. <laughs> Uh, Nick asks like, that's him, a podcast within a podcast where we're gonna be like, hey, Apple, <laughs> what object are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> ben, Erica, we'll have to forget Raul said that, please. I'll edit it out. Uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick asks him why he's being so nice. Russell says because he's just his friend. Uh, Jess and Nick leave the party. Jess wants to run off. Nick tells her it may complicate things, but he loves Russell. <laughs> he, he, Nick says he smells like strong coffee and going to see a man about a horse. <laughs> what a line. <laughs> there are some great ones in this episode. Some of the oh, things he says favorite. in this episode are just top tier. Yeah. Oh. 100%. Top tier, Nick Miller. Uh, he tells her to be a grown up, which is very admirable of Nick. Like, as weird and twisted as he's being here is it's there's some like pure truth to to what he's saying and he says don't be intimidated just because you're younger poorer and wetter than everyone in there because <laughs> she misused Great fancy man's cool. japanese bidet <laughs> uh back at trivia night winston throws out random answers to questions he then confesses he didn't want shelby to feel he was stupid she assures him she doesn't want a rich, smart guy who has his own car. She wants him. <laughs> Winston checks if she's saying she's his girlfriend. Uh, Schmidt, Schmidt, from the car, <laughs> tells, te tells Winston he hopes uh, his bed moves are better than his street work. <laughs> he, and he also offers to put on Jodeci because he's, uh, he's not racist like, like his mom. <laughs> Back at the party, Jess finds Russell and explains she's not used to people who have it all together. He reassures her he's not. Uh, he can't even talk to his own kid, he says, and she wanted to go bra shopping, so he bought her a ski vest. A ski vest? A ski vest. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> That's weird. Um, she, she tells him everyone, every eye roll means he's doing something right, then admits it's just what she tells her parents to make them feel better. Uh, he asks her out to dinner. She says, great, takes a step back and lands in the koi pond. Nick comes running, pulling off Russell's sweater and taking care to fold it. <laughs> so Flashback to inside, Nick pretending he's a rich guy at Russell's desk, then a police lieutenant, then a businessman negotiating with aliens because, yep. yep. And that's our recap. 
What did you guys think of this episode? Uh, ben, what do you think? This episode is incredible. Um, we talk about in prior episodes, just about the show getting a little bit zany or a little bit wackier, and this is kind of hits that perfect level of zaniness. Um, yes. Jake Johnson, just hats off to you, buddy. Like, what a performance. Everyone in the, this episode had a strong, I'd say for the most part, a strong episode. But man, yeah. he just kills those lines. He is so good. Um, but yeah, no, I absolutely loved it. I uh, loved, obviously, the introduction of Russell and obviously how that sort of changes things for Jess and always fun to sort of see her <laughs> in that kind of nervous sort of Jess mode. Um, it's always a great time. So no, I absolutely loved it. I uh, thought some really, really great moments um, and some good character moments, which I'm sure we'll talk about shortly as well. Our special guest, Rahul, what did you think of this episode? I mean, for me, this is one of my favorite episodes in the season. Like when 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 I was talking to Erica about the fact that you guys were doing this show, I was like, there is one episode that I want to be on if I'm allowed to guest on it, and it's this one because I don't know exactly what Ben said. It's super zany. There's so many good character moments, so many good lines. Like even I mean, I know we'll get into it in a sec, but like even Winston, who I thought probably had probably had the kind of least screen time in this episode like he was kind of there with the trivia bits but like he has some banging lines as well <laughs> and like we'll, we'll get to it in a sec and i don't know i just thought the whole story was really nice like you know at first nick and jess are both kind of like ah, oh, we hate russell and then they kind of like come around to a different way of thinking so they kind of develop a bit and yeah i just i just loved it that's a great point you're making rahul because as my co-hosts will tell you, there's not a lot usually to uh, dissect with Winston. Not many lines that are like mm -hmm. worthy of his character or uh, show any development. But this one, this one's great. Uh, Erica, yeah. how do you feel about this one? I feel like, like you both said, Winston, finally, we have something to talk about. And honestly, I'm giving so much credit to Elvin. Elvin brings out the <laughs> best Elvin is a boss. Winston. He is one of, as for as few episodes as he's actually, and I know that we get him, I think, like, one more time this season, maybe. Uh, but, man, that kid is, he brings out the best in Winston, and I love it. Uh, this episode is top tier, one of my favorites of this season, easily. Um, maybe my favorite episode so far, and, yeah, the whole, this, this episode is crazy, hilarious, so funny from start to finish. Everyone's stories hit for me and i just yeah i love it start to finish this is one of my favorites and it's a two-parter two-parter heck yes i love it finally we've always been saying so many of these episodes could be two-part episodes and we got a two-part episode heck yes oh i'm so excited <laughs> so excited can you imagine what it would have been like if the, those two story uh those those two episodes were squeezed into one episode oh, it would have been like i would, would have cry yeah. so much so much would have been lost if they would have shoved this into one episode and i'm just yeah i'm so glad we didn't get that like we did with so many of the other episodes like i'm just yeah so glad that we get to a two-parter for this this storyline because fancy man is great russell is such a great character and yeah i love it i love this it, it really shows you that even even someone who may appear to be all together might not necessarily be all together and it's fantastic i love this Great. love these episodes here fantastic uh we'll start with our first segment which is nick's tips and i'm holding on to one which i want to say first before you guys steal it from me because it's just so wacky and very to nick miller some might say uh is when he's at a uh, fancy man's study and he says, when I put my hand on this desk, I feel sexually proficient for the first time in my <laughs> life. <laughs> wow. Uh, and I mean, coming from a legal background as well, I love the bit where he just says, like, I want to sit at this desk and veto a law. <laughs> like, yes. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. You also fantastic. follows that line now with I'm President Miller, you're all fired, bring our boys home. <laughs> <laughs> Which says everything. Yeah. It really does. <laughs> uh, do we have any special standouts? What are we thinking? What do we have? Do we, uh, Erica, I, let's start with you. I think yeah. I have so many, I have so many lines from Nick in this episode. 
but uh some of my some of my favorites is this is the problem jess it's rich people we are right where they want us jess just suckling on the teat of consumerism <laughs> i mean that's fantastic and and to tie with that one well i guess the 40 dollars i saved on that gap card didn't pay off kind of goes right <laughs> along with that um but i think i think uh and to go back to when he's in in the office you smell that it smells like leather teddy roosevelt and wistfulness is <laughs> <laughs> but literally I think like every other line he has is just it's gold amazing. in this episode <laughs> incredible but i think uh so other than the the few that you talked about is i don't know why i put it to or i don't know why i put it on to be honest with you it i just came in here and it smelled like shakespeare if shakespeare were a damn cowboy, cowboy. and a hawk's nest <laughs> and boat fuel and cigars and burping man stuff <laughs> i love it i love it i have so many more i could talk forever about all of nick's lines in this episode i really could but i'm yep those are going to be the ones that yeah i just have to i want to hear our resident lawyer's opinion about uh, nick miller's favorite oh, lines man. what do you think Rahul? i loved his lines in this we've already said i mean <laughs> erica had a lot of good ones but for me the reason that this episode has stuck in my head because because I watched season one for the last time probably two years ago. But the reason that this episode sticks in my head is just those post-credit or sort of end credit bits. Mm -hmm. And the one where he's just like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you. You're trying to charge me a billion dollars. Ha! That's nothing to me. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh, my. He's just so good. And then, yeah, all, all, the, base, all the lines that he does in that little segment like he's like, I like to speak to the Galactic Emperor, um, mm -hmm. which was just perfect. And then he was just like, "All right, here's the deal. I'm gonna write a number on this piece of paper and slide it over the desk. <laughs> you know, what I'm just gonna tell you it's five bajillion dollars." <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's so good. Like I, I feel like I can totally see myself doing that. It's like he's like a small, like he's like a child in this like wonderful like place that he's come across, and he's just he's just living his best life. You know, it really is. Living the dream. Saying, what do you say is China mine, Mr. Yang? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that one. <laughs> what was that, Ben? <laughs> he finishes it off by saying, so what do you say is China mine, Mr. <laughs> Yang? Yes. Yep. Yep. Oh, that is amazing. So do you have any others, Ben? No, uh, I've, got, I've got quite a few guys, so strap on in. Uh, <laughs> here, let's, here. Strap on in. Let's have a look here. <laughs> okay, so Nick, uh, see, that's cool. I've always wanted to be a mole person in reference to obviously the ghost protocol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's the part at the start, which I think is great, where he's talking about writing his letter, a letter to Kevin, so because he can't obviously use his phone. So, I mean, right now I'm writing a letter to my friend Kev, uh, seeing if he wants to party with me this Friday. What up, Kev? You in? <laughs> Nick Miller. <laughs> oh, so good. There's the part where obviously they're, they're going through the big mansion and Nick's obviously just referencing a kitchen island? Be a man. And then yes. just let your counter attach to it. I had that one written down too. I love it. That's so great. Yeah. And just his line about how he thinks he understands hunting now. Oh, the yeah. duck. Oh my God. Yeah, I had that one written down as well. Perfect. There's so many good lines, but I think also probably one of my top ones is when Russell just busts and he just walks into the office and they're talking about the sweater and he's like, I thought it was a chair sweater. Those exist. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there's the dialogue that I think you mentioned. Oh, uh, look, this may complicate things, but I'm in love with him. Uh, no, I won't shut up. He smells like strong coffee and going to see a man about a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Just the whole boy part stuff. Like even as a character, or even as the writers, you actually wrote the line. It's like who comes up with that? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and the There's whole quirky point. randomness in a lot of shows, but here it's very different. And this definitely embodies a lot of like what makes this show the way the like that the weird quirk of this show is is uh, you can see it in abundance in this episode. It's nice. It's nice to see how. Like the different sort of uh, trajectory they're going on now. Mm. Mm. And I will say as well, because obviously we talk about all sorts of things under these particular character moments, but 
Nick's potential growth in this episode is what I'm going to say about him yes. coming to that realization where he can grow up. He can be like this. Obviously, Russell giving them that dialogue about how, you know, around his age, he had a long ponytail, a skinny ponytail, I believe, mm-hmm. um, yeah. selling his bike to make money. Um, just having that dialogue and just sort of seeing Nick come to that realization that, you know, he might potentially need to change things at some point. Um, but, but yeah, now, and, and the, yeah. Like he'll potentially have to change things, but then five <laughs> minutes later, he'll have a desk like <laughs> drinking the whiskey and just making all the fake phone calls. And that's <laughs> like, and of course, the Koi Bond scene where he, like you said earlier, he's just gently folding <laughs> the sweater because he doesn't want to ruin it. Um, just that whole moment was fantastic. And his little pep talk with Jess, I thought was fantastic as well, getting her back in the game and getting her back in the mansion. Um, yeah, I think all around a very strong episode for Nick for this one. Yeah. Now it's time for our special uh, Winston uh, segment. What's up, Winston? There it is. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, Rahul, let's start with you. Any standout Winston moments, which you al- already talked about? I mean, yeah, the, the big one. So there was there was two, which was the, the one that I had was, he was like, you were denied a phone because you have the credit score of a homeless ghost. Yep. And, yeah. And it's like... <laughs> Again, like, how do you even come up with that? Like, if I was if I was in that situation, I would not have said anything close to that. Like, what? <laughs> like, how did you come up with that in that moment? It's amazing. Um, and then the other one that I really liked from Winston was when he was talking about Mesopotamia, when he was, like, trying to memorize the trivia. Mm-hmm. And then Elvin was like, so do you even know what Mesopotamia is? And he was like, yeah, duh, of course I know what it is. I like, use it in a <laughs> sentence. And he just paused for a second. I was like, Look, there's Mesopotamia. <laughs> I, like, I guess it worked, but yeah, it was pretty. It was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. So those, those uh, are my two standout ones. I know there are a few others, but I don't want to. I don't want to hog all the lines. I'll give you guys <laughs> some time. All right, Ben, uh, do you have any that uh, Rahul hasn't mentioned yet? No, I had those two, which are just amazing to reiterate. Really They're fantastic lines. Um, They're awesome. At least there's like there's funny lines that we can talk about with winston for once even if there's only a couple of them erica you have anything no those are mine as well yeah Yeah. basically the homeless ghost one because that was just hilarious and i'm like basically the same thing great we have a funny winston line that we can finally talk about i was so excited (laughs) it's hilarious and yeah i just i love it it was so good so good i mean the, the other one that i had was like straight after the homeless ghost one. He also says he's like, "You weigh more than your credit score." Yeah, <laughs> right, yes, that was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was good. Now on to the douche jar. So this is the segment where we uh, pick our favorite douchey or sometimes very rarely non douchey Schmidt lines. Um, I have one here. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go to the stairwell talking to Winston after <laughs> working on his glutes to work on my calves. Come with, and then Winston says, hell no. And then Schmidt looks, looks at him and says, <laughs> yeah, he looks him up and down and says, you sure? Like, I don't know. Come on. The, the man's down. Don't knock him when he's down. Yeah. Also, I like the fact that he uh, called himself out about the douche jar. So I'm I'm going to s- try and submit this for your guys's consideration i'm gonna jar myself on that one just (laughs) is the epitome of the douchiness that i believe schmidt is so uh what do we think um let's start with you ben what are your douche jar produce deuce (laughs) i got that line (laughs) i got shall we be careful with his mustache please Mm, it's very (laughs) (laughs) yeah I, I want to leave some for everyone else. So I just want to know, has anyone got any anything on their list in regards to Schmidt talking about, or talking about the coming weekend? Has anyone got anything on their list? No. I think I'll so. say that. Come the weekend, I'm the one who's filling up my car with Fila, Nautica, Impulse, oh, Fila, Hilfiger, CK, yeah. VR, Levica, and more Fila. Oh, no, that one might take it. I, more I Fila. Take it. More Fila. Yeah. Well, it's a great line. <laughs> Erica, what are yours? So I, I only have a couple. Uh, it was question, how do you forget that? Answer, you don't. Winston, don't worry about it, man. It's your public school education. You'll catch yeah. up. 
Oh yeah. Uh, he jarred and himself then the other one was well, the uh, blame your period. I've actually done this before. Yeah. <laughs> so those were my two for uh, the douche jar. Yeah. Um, the only reason I like that line is because it actually connects the two storylines. But that's all the all the effort that they put into it. It mm -hmm. seems. As like the whole education thing being tied to the main storyline yeah. with yes. mm. um, Rahul. Uh, the having? only the other one that I had was when they're actually doing the trivia, and it's something like which of the five Great Lakes is like contained entirely in the states, and then Winston says um, Lake Michigan. <laughs> no, he says like Lake like Erie or something like I don't know what the five Great Lakes are, um, and then he just goes, Neither "Yeah, I, only I, if I, Lake Michigan didn't exist, and we won a fictional U.S. Canada war." <laughs> Like, yeah. that is so unnecessary, but like, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> unnecessary could be Schmidt's middle name. Like, <laughs> Basically, out of what he says is unnecessary. <laughs> um, what do we what do we vote for for the douchiest douchiest line? Uh, think? I think himself. Yeah, Which I was one? gonna say the public school one, the the one about public school education. And the way he jars himself. Yeah. Yeah. That's Erica. what I'm going to go with. Yep. Same. Yeah. Okay. We're going with the jarring himself. Jarring <laughs> himself. All right. <laughs> All right now, to... one. That's why he had to jar himself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But no, but knowing that and then admitting to it and like just almost pridefully admitting to it, like, oh, right. I'll take care of that. It's like the ultimate <laughs> meta dude. I got this one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um now we want to talk about some uh favorite jess moments uh what do we have erica um it's like buying a car or a bra eight years man <laughs> one of my favorite lines because God, it's so true ridiculously true um and then like we talked about already 250 you get 150 just for being alive uh, but I think my favorite Jess moment is when she's sitting at the desk, uh, taking the condoms off of the, uh, what are they? The, the bananas? Cucumber. 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 Uh, condoms are harder to take off than I thought. I know how to put them on, but I don't know how to take them off. I guess somebody else has always done it for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's so very Jess, but, and then, yeah, it's just, it was great. Um, uh, I have a few other, a few other Jess lines, but I am excited to, oh, hold on. A lost soul, an orphan, a Jewish kid with a keyboard, a little slut who can dance, and one fatso, and I'll choreograph some dances and make a show. Uh, that was my other favorite Jess moment when she was talking. Again, to right. Much like Prince oddly Prince. specific stuff to come up with. Oddly moment. specific. <laughs> like Jewish kid with a keyboard. Like in my head, yes. I was like, I only watched this episode. As I said, like I watched season one like two years ago and obviously rewatched this episode for this. But like, d is that a thing in one of the previous episodes? Was that a throwback or something? Or does just, she just came up with that on the spot? Amazing. Apparently, she had already done that before, according to the principal. But yeah, it's just <laughs> nothing in a previous episode. Just yeah. credit to the writers, man. I don't know where they came up with this stuff. Rahul, what's what are your favorite Jess moments? I think for me, there are a couple. I mean, I obviously liked. It's not necessarily a line, but I obviously liked the bit where she just screwed up with the Japanese bidet. <laughs> that was just so perfect. Like, I, I think it was just weird because I guess obviously they're not going to show her like going to the loo, obviously. But like, she sits down fully clothed and she just smashes like four different buttons on the thing. I'm like, who does that? Like, you, you'd probably take a second to like inspect it and just be like, maybe we try one of these things just to see what <laughs> uh, what would you yeah. say to someone that does that though hmm? what would you say to someone that does that with a bidet well i think there's one thing that i would say to them I'd, I'd basically tell them to get flushed oh. <laughs> oh. there we go i said the thing i did the yeah. thing you know yeah. like, sort of simpsons like say the thing <laughs> and to hear that thing said more often you can visit twitch.tv slash rahulu rahulu underscore right is that, that is yeah, I got the answer right. Yes. <laughs> ben, do you have any uh, Jess moments that we might have missed? I do, surprisingly. Now, can we talk about the fact that we get the return of Jess's British accent? 
for a split second. For a split second. Yes. <laughs> we also get you doing a curtsy. <laughs> Did, did you um, just curtsy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So, that's exactly what we're thinking as we're watching that. Wait, because was, it wasn't a full curtsy almost. It was like a no. half curtsy. Like, did she just curtsy? And then he yep. just says it. That's great. <laughs> um, I like. Then, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ben. I just got one line, but it's just, um, do you have a box of charity phones you're sending to Africa? Kenny <laughs> <Yes>. has those. <laughs> Yes. So good. I love that one. I love that one. It's I love the one um, where she says, "Cast my phone into the fiery chasm where you <laughs> four people." <laughs> Such a strong episode for Jesus this uh, this episode. So um, no, it's really good. And once again, yeah, some real good growth from here as well. So no, that's pretty much oh, absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of growth, who is our? Oh, I did not know where you were going to go with that for a sec. Me <laughs> there. <laughs> Who is our all-American hero who showed some growth this episode? Um, this is just uh, I I'm I bet you anything, Rahul. This is going to be our most uh, just heated segment. Always I is. Think, I don't think so. It's pretty clear. Cool. The MVP of the episode. Is that this is people? this is yeah. what this is. Okay. Cool. What do you think, Rahul? As our guest, we will, let's start with you. I mean, as, as as you could probably guess, I sort of alluded to it. Like the reason that I remember this episode and I love this episode is because of Nick. Um, his lines are just so good. Like that's the thing that I remember about it. So for me, Nick is the MVP. If only, I mean, obviously I had everything else, but it's such that end credit scene that just gets me every time. And for me, it's got to be Nick. And All he right. does growth and, and other stuff too. So he, he's funny. And Andy has that that side of things too. So for me, it's sort of like very sort of, you know, he he did well on all different sort of criteria for the MVP. I agree. I agree, one hundred percent. Ben, what do we think? So before we get to MVP, I just want to say that the uh, MVKWG uh, most valuable kip with glasses was definitely Alvin this week. So shout out to you, Alvin. Okay, but MVP is clearly Nick Miller this week. Okay, Nick Miller. What an episode. Like I, said, I talked about it earlier, but Jake Johnson's delivery of every line is just incredible. Um, such great dialogue. The writers did an incredible job of him. But that was, like I said, that's just part of it. Obviously, his monologue with Jess, getting her back into the mansion, like we've talked about, um, seeing some growth from him as a character and actually seeing him come to that realization that he may need to grow up at least a little bit <laughs> for now. <laughs> um, that's probably a good thing. But um, yeah, just all the monologues that he has in the office, just all the back and forth with Jess and Russell. Um, I just thought it was such an incredibly strong episode for him. And uh, to me, absolutely the uh, MVP of this episode. All right, Erica. Guys, are we all going to agree on Nick Miller? Oh, I think so. Oh, 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 because it's definitely Nick Miller. Yeah. Nick Miller oh. is my MVP, of course. This oh. episode, there is no yeah. question it's Nick Miller this episode. Like, absolutely no question. Nick showed the most growth that, I mean, you just with the getting Jess back in there to go see Russell, like, dude, he obviously likes you. Get back in there. Stop being such a baby. Go own it, you know, with your wet self and get back in there, girl. Come on, <laughs> Nick Miller. MVP, hands down. Absolutely. Well, this is not going to be any fun because I also <laughs> think it's Nick Miller. So <laughs> We all agree. Oh, my gosh. The There's a first for everything. We all agree, I think, as well, that Jess did have an incredibly strong episode. Which she just did. Means, how, did. Like, how did Nick manage to actually top that? Because her performance for the whole episode was incredible. Somehow, yes. him and his supporting role just somehow just even kicked it up a notch more. and Knocked so, it out of the park. Better. Yeah, we see all aspects of Nick's character. That that has to be said also. Like mm -hmm. Nick's the funniest he's ever been. He's the most uh, sincere with Jess uh, that he's ever been. It's 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 he's he's the MVP, hundred mm -hmm. percent. I'm mm -hmm. not surprised you guys went with Nick. Um, now it's time for our special segment. Hey girl, what you doing? Um, Rahul, what you doing? What have you been up to? Ooh, what have I been up to? That was a good question. Um, yeah, I've been I've been working a lot, been streaming. I've been um, I'm, I've been playing a lot of Hitman and Genshin. Mm -hmm. I, is, this, is this about what I'm doing in real life? Or is this supposed to be a new? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was just like, I, I, I watched. 
<laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I've been, I've been streaming a lot. I am um, actually, you guys might not know this, but I, I apparently got married yesterday. What? <gasps> what? Because I pulled my favorite anime waifu from. <gasps> Get- <laughs> well, right, I, was I was streaming yesterday. It might have been the day before, and um, yeah, like it's a character that I since since trailers for Genshin Impact came out, um, it was a character I was like, this is the one I've got to add to my team. Um, this is the one that I want, but it was like a zero point six percent chance of getting her. And wow! Years ago, I, I pulled her, and so apparently I'm now married to my anime waifu. So that's awesome! <laughs> I didn't get you uh, you know, for your engagement. <laughs> you can catch the VOD. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to catch the VOD. What's that? Does sound good? Twitch.tv slash Rahula Hoop underscore is where you can find the VOD of the <laughs> beautiful <laughs> ceremony. <laughs> All right. Um, we, we have one more uh, segment that we want to do right here. Um, it's Who's That Guest? Yeah. Erica, take it away, won't you? Okay, so we have a couple guests in this episode. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually roll this uh roll our ticker down here um and have this show in here. So we have Julia at number one, Gensler at number two, Remy at number three, Sadie at number four, Glasses Kid at number five, Crazy Principal Lady at number six, Cliff the Little Intern at seven. Coin slot kid at eight, green arrows tongue at number nine, and Oliver currently at number 10. We have some guests in this episode. So we have we haven't added her yet because we keep forgetting about her because she sucks so bad, which is Shelby, the world's worst girlfriend. Um <laughs> Shelby kind of sucks. Eh? Can we, Shelby we really, really talk about that? Yeah, she really sucks. Um, we also have Fancy Man to add in here, Russell. Uh, we also still have Crazy Principal Lady and Elvin, which I do love. I have to bring up his one line he had in this episode, which is what a, the fake glasses we kind of touched on. But his line, what about fake glasses? It worked for me. I, <laughs> I just I, I love that line. Obviously, these these are fake glasses. They're the blue light filter glasses. I love them because they help with my migraines. But I'm just saying, yeah, Elvin's got a point. Just, you know. Erica, okay. no, these are not fake glasses. They actually have a purpose. <laughs> they, have, they have a purpose, but he does have a point. They're fantastic, though. I love Elvin. Um, all right. So we need to add Shelby the crazy or the the world's worst girlfriend and, and a fancy man in here. Decide if we're going to leave crazy principal lady and glasses kid in here where we have them. So what what are we thinking for Shelby? Like she's obviously got to go pretty low on here because she sucks. Um, I don't like Shelby. I don't like Shelby either. <laughs> but I think she's got to go above Oliver. Like it, I think she goes between Green Arrow's tongue and Oliver because I think she's better than Green Arrow's tongue, honestly. Erica, or who's Oliver? Oliver, that dude, the taco guy from the Valentine's Day episode. Oh uh, yeah. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, so she still goes at the end, I think. But I think Green Arrow's tongue still has to go b- above Shelby because yeah. he's better than Shelby. One hundred percent, sure. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. We're just gonna write Shelby though because we're running out of character space. Um, and then okay, what about Russell though? Russell, I like Russell. Yeah, I like Russell too. I think he's great. I like Russell a I lot. Think Russell is almost Julia tier. Okay. Ooh. So I think here's our question though. We Julia's been gone a couple episodes. Are we leaving her on the list? She's dead to us now. Is, she... <laughs> is that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> or well, okay. So or but do we leave her on because she's in this season? I think we might What do we one. think, Rahul? What do you think? Because we're just making this up as we go along. Basically. So, I don't know. Julia's the girlfriend that he breaks up with, right? In the in, she's in the her. lawyer girlfriend, who's oh, like the female. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Quirky, funny. Hmm. I think she stays on the list. We, okay, we so Russell is Russell better than Genslinger? Yes. No. No. Ooh. Here we go. Things are getting heated now. Let's go. see. I knew it. I knew it happened eventually. It was an MVP. I knew it was going to be on the guests. <laughs> is Julia our number one? Julia is our number one. I think so. so. I say. I say Russell goes number two. Then Russell number two. 
I agree with that. And even just for his, his the fun line with the bidet that we talked about. That's <laughs> fair. Just happy faces. I've never gone past Trek. <laughs> it know, is a great cool. line. He's like such a nice, genuinely cool guy. You know, he's just helping mm. her, helping her out, giving her his car, and you know, he just seems so chill with the whole bidet situation. Two minutes later, he's like obviously somehow just changed and <laughs> looks perfectly fine. Like he's, he's <laughs> cool. You know, he's got sweet. He's got chair sweaters. You know, he does have a chair sweater. Yeah. If I need right. to go and see a man about a horse, I'm taking him, you know? Absolutely. Agreed. All right, Rahul, what do you think of this? Does no, he make it um, to I think so. I think so. I um okay. I thought he was great in the episode. Like again, he had some he had some good lines. Well, obviously, maybe it'll change in part two of the episode. <sighs> but but for now, there is part two. There is a part two. But for so now, excited. I'm thinking I'm thinking. Num number two works. All right, so let's run the ticker at Julia number one, Russell number two, Genslinger number three, Remy number four, Sadie number five, Glasses Kid number six, Crazy Principal Lady number seven, Cliff the Little Intern number eight, Coin Slot Kid number nine, Green Arrow's Tongue at number 10, Shelby 11, and Oliver number 12. If you don't agree with the list, let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if we forgot anybody, also let us know because, you know, some of these characters just are kind of forgettable, kind of like Shelby and Oliver. That's you know who's not forgettable? Jake Johnson. Let's check in on Jake. Oh, what a segue. Damn, that was good. Woo. Any any updates? Anyone? I'm just going to check the update and see if he's responding. Go ahead. I haven't heard anything. Uh, hashtag is let Jake know. Let Everyone know. remember. And, and use that. We're just trying to see if any developments, you know, I've got a message any... with Jake Jansen, but no Jake Johnson. Oh, oh that's <laughs> sad face. Well, apparently, I won a free Xbox. Yeah. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I heard about that. Congratulations. <laughs> I just need to send a whole bunch of information through to them. So, sweet. Thanks, Jake Jansen. But yeah, Jake Johnson, uh, please, please come on the show. That'd be fantastic. We'd love to have you on. Absolutely. There you go. Uh, now it's time for our ratings and our final thoughts. Uh, ben, let's start with you. So this is just a top tier episode all around. Everyone brings it this week. Um, I will say the B plot for me didn't really do it. Um, like I said, I enjoyed the Winston moments and the Elwin moments, but the actual plot line itself uh, didn't really do too much for me. But as a whole, the episode is just so strong and so good. I uh, just uh, the cast this episode I think is absolutely hands down the best cast so far. Um I think normally they try and restrict it to just a few of them, but in this one obviously, you know, we got that great setup at the start with all the people at the mobile store, some great actors in there. Uh we've obviously got Russell, um can't remember the actor's name, but man, that guy just exudes coolness, you know, he's just so <laughs> such a great actor. Um so good. Um and obviously Elvin um in this one as well. Um so we get a really, really good mix of uh cast and characters in this one here. So no, I thought uh, overall a fantastic episode. Some really, really good growth, like we've talked about um, from some of these moments in here, and some pro some probably the most zany and wacky moments, and some of the just the most humor I think that we've had just about in the episode. So all in all, I've got to give this everyone ten out of ten. Schmidty's my <gasps> first perfect score. Whoa! <laughs> wow. I've been going back to watching this season. I kind of remember it really, really fondly, but re-watching it with a slightly more critical eye. I think with some episodes it absolutely hit and some have probably been a little bit more of a letdown than I would have liked. But this one reminds me why New Girl is such a special show. Um, it's right. so good. 10 out of 10, everyone. That's what I think of this episode. Shout out to Jake Johnson, man. Just killing the game. Like he's... His comedic beat, his, just him as a comedian in general in any role that he plays, he is so good. I mean, obviously, we haven't talked about some of his roles, but Into the Spider-Verse, like, this Peter B. Parker is one of my favorite characters in the Spider-Man universe. It's His delivery of just about everything and anything he does is great, and I think this is really where it started for him, for me personally, to where I sort of become a big fan of his. So, yeah, incredible episode. Let's not forget about Let's Speak Cops. With Coach. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he was also uh, in Tag, I think. As um I don't know if you've seen that one, but um I think he was 
one of the characters in Tag. The one about the four friends he plays. Like, oh, right, right, right. He's right, like, right. I think he plays a similar kind of character, like the burnout who like smokes weed all the time and <laughs> um, and like he lives for the Tag game, basically. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> If you haven't seen Tag, you absolutely should. It's fantastic. It's so good. Yeah, great movie. I'll have to get on that. Rahul, uh, what are your ratings and final I thoughts? Mean, on this? What has Ben said that I can't, you know, like I basically agree completely with Ben. It's 10 out of 10 schmees for me. We've already said this. Spoiler alert. Like this is my favorite episode in the entire season. That's basically why I'm on this episode of the podcast, just to gush about this episode um but yeah i think it had all the elements that make a good episode like def- definitely some cool like growth amongst characters good mix of characters loads of funny moments like you know some episodes i felt like sort of drag a little bit but this one was just like you know th- even though they split it across two a two-parter it just felt right like i don't know it was just a perfect episode so 10 out of 10 schmees for me nice <laughs> getting tens almost across the board erica will you keep this going Nope. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Though I am giving this a nine because I do love this episode, but you will find it very difficult to get a 10 out of me, I think, just because I am I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give one episode, I think, a season a 10, and this one's not my 10. You'll see it Ooh. soon, though, I promise. Uh, maybe, like, real soon. But it's not this episode. Um, this episode is fantastic, though. It's definitely, absolutely, hands down, one of the best episodes in the season, if not the entire series. And I think it sets up a lot of things just that we're going to see further down the line. Um, I, I love, I mean, Jess does a phenomenal job. Uh, Nick does a phenomenal job. You you can't get. I mean, some of these lines are fantastic, and they make me laugh every time I hear them. And even like you said, the the B storyline isn't super, but I mean, it's still you you get that. Uh, I I think the only thing that bothers me about the B storyline, and this is why I'm not giving it a ten. The only thing that bothers me about the B storyline is that you keep having these moments with Winston and Shelby, where it's like oh yeah, these are my feelings. And then they're thinking, it's like, oh yeah, and then these are my feelings. It's like, okay, we get it. You guys like each other. This is fine. We're going through this every episode. Just just mm-hmm. get keep progressing the relationship and then it'd be cool. But I feel like we keep doing the same thing over and over with these two. And it just kind of, it's almost like a, you know, it's like, it's almost like they don't know what to do with these characters in the first season, which I get it. It's the first season, fine, whatever. But I just feel like we keep spinning our wheels with these two characters. And like at least having Schmidt in the mix with them this, this episode made it a little bit better with having that kind of like third wheel mentality and almost making it like Winston was the third wheel made it a little bit better. But still, I, I think that's just that was my biggest hang up on why this episode didn't get the time. But there will be the 10 is coming, I promise. But yeah, this one's going to get a nine for me. I wholeheartedly agree with you, Erica. The only reason this doesn't go up to a 10 for me is the B storyline. Um, it's not, it doesn't seem fleshed out. It's not in any way connected to the A storyline other than that one line about education. Mm-hmm. And they could have gone more. They could have, they could have done more with that. Like it's right there. They could have easily just had one connective sort of sequence for these two storylines to at least meet towards the end i don't i don't know so I, i'm giving it a nine as well well they could have just filled that time with more alvin and winston you know heck yeah i mean that yeah. could that would have pushed it been, over yeah. for me i'd have been fine with that i love those two together it's great i like sometimes the like they have that b plot when they could just have sort of fun cutaways and it doesn't have to be two storylines per episode it could have been filler yeah i'd have been fine yeah. with filler do do you guys go through the episodes and like say like is this the is this the highest ranked episode so far? Yeah, like I think it is. So it's really because I, I was reading about this episode and there's a piece of trivia that I found. <gasps> Apparently, the director of this episode went on to direct Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. What? what? Nice. Which is awesome. like such a random thing, but like he he, he went places after this episode. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, that's not unheard of. The the guys you're gonna have to help me out here, the the Marvel brothers who direct the Marvel movies. 
Yeah. Yeah. With community, yeah. They were in community and they did, mm-hmm. they used to just, they used to direct My Name is Earl episodes. Oh, that yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So, and I knew those names just seeing them on screen from yeah. that show. It's, yeah, it's, cool. yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, so I think that about wraps things up for us. Um, Rahul, where can the good people find you? So you can find me out t- on Twitter at Rahula Hoop with an underscore and also twitch.tv forward slash Rahula Hoop with an underscore as well. Thank you very much for coming on. Oh, it thank you for having me. It's been so fun to talk about this episode. More people need to watch this show, if only Absolutely. just to get to this episode. Of course, the rest of it is good too, but just get to this point. It's worth it. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Um, well, you can find us on uh, YouTube and the podcast feeds and everything uh, is at theoupod.com. We'd appreciate a subscription as well to our YouTube channel. Uh, Erica, what's going on with the Patreon? <gasps> Patreon is still up and running, and you can uh, join for just a couple bucks a month, up to $10. We have a couple cool little feeds, and yeah, you can get some early access and other fun things like that. So go ahead and check it out if you would like. And if not, hey, we still appreciate that like and subscribe and all that stuff. That is absolutely 100% free to do on YouTube and all the podcast services. So. A hundred percent. Ben, any last words for our viewers slash listeners? Yes, we have just launched a new show. Um, Eric is uh, running this one. It's incredible. The Optimistic Underdog, are you? Um, is the new show that is out where we'd be talking about sports with cool people. And I believe Rahul actually has an episode uh, that has gone up. Um, as well as some other special guests. So please check that out, uh, theoupod.com. Uh, like Al said, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That makes a huge difference to us. And obviously you'll get those notifications to know when we go live. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. You can check out also some of my and Al's work on uh, Simply Sassy Vids. Uh, some great stuff over there. We've got Please Be Excited Plays, where I play for uh, Cobra Kai video game with uh, one of the Cobra Kai actors. Uh, we've got uh, some great interviews with a lot of great people from Kind of Funny, voice actors, all sorts of fun stuff there. Uh, we are launching a brand new show. We'll be recording it live today, so keep an eye out for that. I can't say what it is, but in the next Ooh. couple of weeks, uh, definitely check that out uh, if all goes according to plan. So, <laughs> um, and you can catch me at please, the letter B, and then excited on Twitter um, and twitch.tv slash please be excited uh, for just my general streams and please be excited plays. That's me. Erica, your handle is at ambolina.com or not dot com, but you know, all those places. <laughs> at ambolina.com. Twitter and, and the Twitch and all those things. That's where you can find me if you really want to see me more places other than just here. And Rahul's at Rahula Hoop underscore on Twitch. And is that the same on Twitter again? Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that about wraps things up for us. Um, until next time, keep it unofficial. Love you, beautiful people. Bye. Bye. Bye.